Hi there, and welcome back to another video on items and inventory. I want to start out this video by telling you guys that I have created a Discord channel some time ago, but for some reason I never really announced it in one of the videos. So you can follow the link in the description to join it. In there you can discuss, well, pretty much anything you like, but most importantly you can use that as a place to ask questions about programming or Unity development in general. I am there most of the time, and I will do my best to help you if you have any questions, so feel free to join, and I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we'll be covering a few issues that have been brought up by viewers along the series, and we'll be taking a look at ways to fix them. The first issue has to do with script execution order. We know that Unity methods, like awake, start and update, always run in a specific order. For example, the awake method always runs before the start method, and so on. But when Unity calls the awake method, it's going to call it for every one of your scripts that have it, and there's no way to know which ones are going to be run first. By the way, this flowchart that we're looking at is available in the Unity documentation, and it shows us the order of Unity's special functions. I'm going to leave a link in the description to the page where this is available. So, in our case, the problem happens when Unity decides that it's going to run the awake method in the inventory and the equipment panel script before running the character script. The flow that we are expecting should start with the character script, where, in the awake, it goes and assigns the events for the inventory and the equipment panel. After that, both the inventory and the equipment panel grab those events that were just assigned by the character and use them to assign to the events of each of their respective slots. But let's see what happens when the flow of the program doesn't happen this way. If the equipment panel or the inventory run first, their events are going to be null, and they will assign null to the events of their slots. If the character runs after that, it's going to assign something to the events of the inventory and the equipment panel. Unfortunately, that's no longer of any use to us, because the slots have already have their events assigned to null. And when this happens, right-clicking item slots will do absolutely nothing, as you would expect. So, surprisingly, or maybe not, there's quite a few possible solutions for this. I think that by far the easiest one for our case is to go into the inventory and the equipment panel classes and change their awake methods to a start. This makes sure that these events are never going to be null when we reach this point, because the character class, which still has an awake method, is guaranteed to run this code before the other two classes run theirs. Another way to fix this, and this uses something interesting that might not be 100% common knowledge, is to go inside Unity, go into the Edit menu at the top, choose Project Settings, and then choose Script Execution Order. This opens up the Script Execution Order Manager in the Inspector window, and here we can add scripts to have them execute in the order that we want. So, all scripts that you don't add to this list will execute at the default time, basically at random. Well, it's not entirely random, but we don't really know how Unity decides the order that they're going to execute. And for scripts that you do add to this list, you can choose for them to be executed either before or after the default time, and you can have as many scripts as you want in here, and you can control their execution order however you like. So you can click and drag to reorder items in this list, you can click the minus sign at the right to remove them, and you can also remove them by dropping them over the default time area. For our particular case, the only thing that we need to guarantee is that the character class runs before the inventory and the equipment panel classes, so we just need to drag it above the default time to have it execute before all other classes, because the inventory and the equipment panel don't need to have a specific execution order between themselves, it's just the character class that needs to execute before those. Another possible solution is to stop having Unity methods entirely, and change the start or awake methods in the inventory and equipment panel classes to our own custom methods, 
let's say we can call them init. That's just a very standard name for a method that you're supposed to call to initialize something. And we also need to make these methods public. And now that Unity is no longer in charge of starting our scripts, we can go over to the character class and call inventory.init and equipment panel.init. And we need to remember to only do this after we assign the event for those classes because we need to have them assigned before init runs. So all of these solutions have their place. None of them is strictly better than the other one, they completely depend on the situation. But for our case, which I feel is a pretty simple one, I prefer to stick to the simplest solution, which is the first one. So I'm just going to revert all these changes and keep only the start methods. The other problem you might be facing also has to do with the inventory class, but this one only happens when you build the project. It doesn't happen in the editor. Let's see why. While in the editor, when you enter play mode, Unity calls the onValidate method. And this is going to refresh the inventory UI, which is going to assign the items for each item slot. The problem is, onValidate only runs in the editor. So if you're in a build, refresh UI is never going to get called. So all the item references in the item slots are going to have their default value which is null. And if the item slots don't have items in them, you will never be able to click them. So the entire inventory just won't work. The fix for this is that we simply need to call the refresh UI method in the start method. And that's that. It's fixed. So these were the two problems that you might have been facing and their solutions. For the next video, I was planning on talking about my Visual Studio setup, the extensions that I'm using and some keyboard shortcuts. You guys let me know what you think about that, if you're interested in that. Don't forget to check out the Discord channel, if you want, I can't tell you what to do. And I hope to see you next time.